Bien, hoy vamos a ver la historia del CEO de Antrofit que dejó BNI para montar su propia empresa. Antrofit, ya sabemos, uno de los grandes competidores de OpenAI es Darío Amodei, que aquí vemos nació en el, en el 83. En 2024 está trabajando en Baidu, un poco después en Google y en 2016 se unió a OpenAI y unos años más tarde, en concreto 5 él y su hermana fundaron Antrofit y ahí toda ya empieza a ser historia conocida, pero hoy ha dicho en una entrevista qué ocurrió eh, para que dejara en 2021, eh, en este caso, OpenAI y decidiera ver o fundar su propia, su propia empresa. Así que vamos a ver la, la entrevista. Aquí tenéis a OpenAI, es este, cuando era su hermana, Greg, ¿vale? Y Ilia Zuckerberg, y bueno, todos esos miembros de un comienzo. Vamos a ver las preguntas y vamos a ver por qué está. Oh, la... Jesus, OpenAI. You've had several years of experience at OpenAI. What's your story and history there? Yeah, so I was at OpenAI for, uh, for roughly five years. Uh, for the last, I think it was a couple of years, you know, I, 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 I was uh, vice president of research there. Um, probably myself and Ilya Sutskiver were the ones who, you know, really kind of set the set the research direction around 2016 or 2017. I first started to really believe in or at least confirm my belief in the scaling hypothesis when, when Ilya famously said to me, the thing you need to understand about these models is they just want to learn. The models just want to learn. Um, and, 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 and again, sometimes there are these one sen there are these one sentences, these Zen cones that you hear them and you're like, ah. That that explains everything. That explains like a thousand things that I've seen. And then, and then I, 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 you know, I, ever after I have this visualization in my head of like, you optimize the models in the right way. You point the models in the right way. They just want to learn. They just want to solve the problem, regardless of what the problem is. So get out of their way, basically. Get out of their way. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Don't impose your own ideas about how they should learn. And you know, if this was the same thing as Rich Sutton yeah. put out in the Bitter Lesson or Gurn put out in the Scaling Hypothesis. You know, I think generally the dynamic was, you know, I got I got this kind of inspiration from uh, from from from, from Ilya and from others, folks like Alec Radford, who did the, the original uh, uh, GPT-1 uh, and then uh, ran really hard with it. Me, me and my collaborators on GPT-2, GPT-3, RL from Human Feedback, which was an attempt to kind of deal with the early safety and durability, things like debate and amplification, heavy on interpretability. So. Again, the combination of safety plus scaling, probably 2018, 2019, 2020, those, those, were, those were kind of the years when myself and my collaborators, probably um, you know, mo mo many, many of whom became co-founders of Anthropic, kind of really ha ha had a vision and, like, and like drove the direction. Why'd you leave? Why'd you decide to leave? Yeah. So look, I I'm going to put things this way, and I, you know, I, think, it, I think it ties to the, to, to the race to the top. Right. Which is, you know, in my time at OpenAI, what I come to see as I come to appreciate the scaling hypothesis and as I come to appreciate kind of the importance of safety along with the scaling hypothesis. The first one, I think, you know, OpenAI was was getting was getting on board with. Um, the second one, in a way, had always been part of, of OpenAI's messaging. Um, but, uh, you know, over over many years of, of the time, the time that I spent there. I think I had a particular vision of how these, how we should handle these things, how we should be brought out in the world, the kind of principles that the organization should have. And look, I mean, there were like many, many discussions about like, you know, should the org do, should the company do this, should the company do that? Like, there's a bunch of misinformation out there. People say like, we left because we didn't like to deal with Microsoft. False. Although, you know, there was like a lot of discussion, a lot of questions about exactly how we do the deal with Microsoft. Um, we left because we didn't like commercialization. That's not true. We built GPT-3, which was the model that was commercialized. I was involved in commercialization. It's, it's more, again, about how do you do it? Like, civilization is going down this path to very powerful AI. What's the way to do it that is cautious, straightforward, honest, um, that builds trust in the organization and in individuals How do we get from here to there? And how do we have a real vision for how to get it right? How can safety not just be something we say because it helps with recruiting? Um, and, you know, I think, I think at the end of the day, um, if you have a vision for that, forget about anyone else's vision. I don't want to talk about anyone else's vision. If you have a vision for how to do it, 
you should go off and you should do that vision. It is incredibly unproductive to try and argue with someone else's vision. You might think they're not doing it the right way. You might think they're, they're, they're dishonest. Who knows? Maybe you're right. Maybe you're not. Um, uh, but uh, what, what you should do is you should take some people you trust and you should go off together and you should make your vision happen. And if your vision is compelling, if you can make it appeal to people, some, you know, some combination of ethically, you know, in the market, uh, you know, if, if you can, if you can make a company that's a place people want to join, uh, that, you know, engages in practices that people think are, are reasonable while managing to maintain its position in the ecosystem at the same time, if you do that, people will copy it. Um, and the fact that you are doing it, especially the fact that you're doing it better than they are, um, causes them to change their behavior in a much more compelling way than if they're your boss and you're arguing with them. I just, I don't know how to be any more specific about it than that, but I think it's generally very unproductive to try and get someone else's vision to look like your vision. Um, it's much more productive to go off and do a clean experiment and say, this is our vision. This is how, this is, this is how we're going to do things. Your choice is you can, you can ignore us, you can reject what we're doing, or you can, you can start to become more like us. And imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Um, and you know, that, that, that plays out in the behavior of customers that pays out in the behavior of the public that plays out in the behavior of where people choose to work. Uh, and again, again, at the end, it's, it's not about one company winning or another company winning. If, if we or another company are engaging in some practice that, you know, people, people find genuinely appealing. And I want it to be in substance, not just, not just in appearance. Um, and, you know, I think, I think researchers are sophisticated and they look at substance. Uh, and then other companies start copying that practice and they win because they copied that practice. That's great. That's success. That's like the race to the top. It doesn't matter who wins in the end as long as everyone is copying everyone else's good practices, right? One way I think of it is like, the thing we're all afraid of is the race to the bottom, right? And the race to the bottom doesn't matter who wins because we all lose, right? Like, you know, in the most extreme world, we, we make this autonomous AI that, you know, the robots enslave us or whatever, right? I mean, that's half joking, but, you know, that, that is the <laughs> most extreme uh, uh, thing, thing that could happen. Then, then it doesn't matter which company was ahead. Um, if instead you create a race to the top where people are competing to engage in good, in good practices, uh, then, you know, at the, at the end of the day, you know, it doesn't matter who ends up, who ends up winning. It doesn't even matter who, who started the race at the top. The point isn't to be virtuous. The point is to get the system into a better equilibrium than it was before. And, and individual companies can play some role in doing this. Individual companies can, can, you know, can help to start it, can help to accelerate it. And frankly, I think individuals at other companies have, have done this as well, right? The individuals that when we put out an RSP, React by pushing harder to, to, to get something similar done, get something similar done at, at, at other companies. Sometimes other companies do something that's like, we're like, oh, it's a good practice. We think, we think that's good. We should adopt it too. The only difference is, you know, I think, I think we are, um, we try to be more forward leaning. We try and adopt more of these practices first and adopt them more quickly when others, when others invent them. But I think this dynamic is what we should be pointing at. And that I think, I think it abstracts away the question of, you know, which company's winning, who trusts who, I, I think all these, all these questions of drama are, are profoundly uninteresting. And, and the, the thing that matters is the ecosystem that we all operate in and how to make that ecosystem better because that constrains all the players. And so Anthropic is this kind of clean experiment built on a foundation of like what concretely AI safety should look like. We're, look, I'm sure we've made plenty of mistakes along the way. The perfect organization doesn't exist. It has to deal with the, the imperfection of a thousand employees. It has to deal with the imperfection of our leaders, including me. It has to deal with the imperfection of the people we've put, we've put to, you know, to oversee the imperfection of the, of the leaders like the, like the board and the long-term benefit trust. It's, it's all, it's all a set of imperfect people trying to aim imperfectly at some ideal that will never perfectly be achieved. Um, that's what you sign up for. That's what it will always be. But uh, uh, imperfect doesn't mean you just give up. There's better and there's worse. And hopefully, hopefully we can begin to build, we can do well enough that we can begin to build some practices that the whole industry engages in. 
And then, you know, my guess is that mul multiple of these companies will be successful. Anthropic will be successful. These other companies, like ones I've been in at the past, will also be successful. And some will be more successful than others. That's less important than, again, that we, we align the incentives of the industry. And that happens partly through the race to the top, partly through things like RSP, partly through, again, selected surgical regulation. Bien, os voy a dejar el enlace del ex Friedman, que es el que suele grabar este tipo de podcast, por si queréis. Dura cinco horas el vídeo original, dice cosas muy interesantes. Esta me parece súper interesante saber por qué una de las personas iniciales dejó eh, OpenAI. 